What's up, YouTube? This video is the second follow-up to my DJ Twos video that I made a couple of months ago. And in this video, I'm gonna answer the question as to what did I purchase for a controller? Did I actually get a DJ controller? Did I actually purchase new turntables? Or did I refurbish my Technique SL1200 Mark IIs that I purchased back in 1988? <laughs> So after a lot of contemplating, a lot of research, a lot of advice from people that I respect that are DJs, from friends, um, a lot of feedback from you guys on my original video, I have made a decision and have went forward with my DJ setup. There are so many cool options out there. I had to kind of figure out what was going to be the main factor in making my decision. Anytime I make a purchase and, and we're talking about purchasing uh, quality equipment, it's an investment. So I'm going to be spending some money. So I'm always trying to figure out like if I spend this amount of money, am I going to have a return on that investment? And with the DJing thing, uh, even though DJing is what got me into the music and audio production profession, it is not how I make my money. Um, and so I had to decide whether how much money I want to spend on that because I don't know if I'm going to be able to make money with it down the road. You already know that I purchased a mixer, uh, so how much do I spend on turntables um, and all of that type of stuff. So anyway, there were a lot of choices out there. Um, I was really leaning towards the Rain uh, 12 controllers. I saw those, like I mentioned earlier, back in uh, 2018 at the Playlist Retreat at Jazzy Jeff's house, and I was blown away by them because... Uh, for the first time in a long time, I had seen a controller that felt like turntables, and I was so used to turntables. And so, initially, when I when I even when I made the video, I was like, I'm going to get me some Rain 12s. I can tell you now, I did not purchase the Rain 12s. One of the reasons why I didn't purchase the Rain 12s is because Rain 12 has a Mach 2 that's coming soon. <laughs> And I didn't want to purchase the version of the Rain 12s that are out now. And then I've got buyer's remorse and I'm trying to sell them in there. So I, I didn't do that right now. I still may get a set of uh, Rain 12s in the future. Um, but, but we'll see. We'll see where, where this whole DJing thing goes. Then that left me with uh, looking at other turntables or refurbishing my uh, SL1200 Mark IIs. And so I looked at a lot of different turntables. I looked at uh, Rain turntables, Denon turntables, Reloop turntables, Pioneer turntables. Um, I actually own a USB, also line level uh, turntable made by Audio Technica that looks like a SL1200. Um, and so I looked at purchasing another one of those. There's some guys who are actually DJing with those. Um, but it all boiled down to... I, I wanted to refurbish my Technique 1200s from 1988. And there are a lot of reasons that, that as to why I did that or, or wanted to do that. First, the, those, that purchase in 1988 was really my first professional purchase. It was my first purchase of professional audio um, music tool. Um, those turntables in 1988, I think, cost me 650 to $700 a piece. Um, and as a 16 year old, that's a lot of money. As an adult, <laughs> grown man, that's a lot of money today. Um, and so it was my first real investment into professional audio equipment. And after I got those turntables, I was in, in the city that I lived in, I was the first DJ to have those turntables. And it, it, I felt a certain way when I used them. I felt like I, I could could be a professional DJ and it really like brought me into the whole professional side of music production of uh, music creation of DJing and, and everything else so there's a sentimental value in those turntables it's the reason I, I still have them I, I will never sell them um, my son was using it um, before he went away to college and so I decided to refer my 1200s 
And in that process, um, I had to find parts for them. It really wasn't anything wrong with them. They worked really, they worked well the last time I used them, but the uh, power switch, the power knob that turns it on and off had broken off. And so I needed to find parts. And so as I was researching for parts, I ran across a website called DJ Henry Customs. And DJ Henry has anything and everything you need to refurb your DJ equipment, specifically uh, Technique 1200 uh, turntables. And so I want to give DJ Henry personally a shout out because his customer service, uh, him, actually, when I called, he picked up the phone. He answered all my questions. He spent time on the phone with me. Uh, I actually purchased something that I, I didn't need, that I thought I need, that wouldn't work the way that I thought it was going to work. And he kind of figured that and called me back and said, hey, are you sure you want this? Because if you buy this, you're going to also need this, um, and, which he didn't have to do. He could have just, I had already sent him the money for it. He could have just sent me the the that that option knowing that it wouldn't work. And so I really appreciate um, that type of integrity when I'm working with um, anybody or, or purchasing from any company. So shout out to uh, DJ Henry down at DJ Henry Customs in Florida. I'm going to put a link to his uh, website in the description of this tutorial. In this video, what I want to do is kind of walk you through the process of refurbishing one of those uh, Technique SL1200 Mach 2 turntables of mine, um, where I'm going to put the power switch on there, um, also uh, add a um, tone arm clip to hold the tone arm in, in place because the other one was broken, um, probably broken in all the different moves I've made since 1988. Not only did I want to make them work, but I also wanted to make them look good. So I found 12-inch skins online through YouTube videos and other people who've refurbed and, and made their turntables look good. And they sell uh, custom skins for any type of equipment you have, well, any type of DJ equipment you have, mixers, turntables, controllers. Um, and so I did a custom skin for my um, S. 1200 Mark IIs, and I also brought a pair of custom Serato control vinyls from them. And so I just want to share that with you and let you see what this process looks like. If you have some turntables that you need to refurbish, it's really not um, that difficult to do. Um, as you'll see in the video, at least for the parts that I had to do anyway, I can't speak to something else being wrong with the turntable. But this may help someone else who has a power switch that's, that's very common, that the power switch, switch breaks um, and that the clip breaks. And if you want to make them look good, and I, I think mine's do look good at this point. What I'm going to do here on this video is I'm going to uh, go ahead and fix this power switch and this clip on here and then kind of refurbish it right in front of your, your eyes. I won't, walk, I won't like bore you through the entire process, but I'll kind of fast forward through it and show it, show you some parts of it. And then we'll get right into like what it looks like when it's finished. Um, and then, you know, you can let me know what you think about my decision uh, and, and what you think about what they look like once you see it. So let's, um, let's get right into this. Um, in order to fix this uh, power switch here, I'm actually going to have to take off the entire bottom of it and kind of go from the bottom in. Um, the part is it's a really small part here. It's just... I got a new uh, 45 disc here to go in here. Um, but this is the power switch, and it has this uh, little arm that goes down inside the turntable right in here that kind of connects into here. And so I'm going to put that on there, and then we're going to put this um, clip on also. This clip holds the arm, the tone arm, into the turntable. So we're going to do both of those here really fast all right so first thing I need to do is turn the turntable over so I can get to the screws underneath it and I also need to um, I've got my uh, my power drill with the screwdriver bit on it uh, to help me kind of expedite this let me take this slip cover off uh, I'm gonna take the plate off here also and you can see how old this thing is, man. It's got cobwebs and stuff still underneath it. Now, the thing is, I need to make sure I keep up with um, all the screws that's a part of this. I'm going to replace these feet also. 
I have some new feet to put on, so let me go ahead and take these off. All right. And so these screws are varying uh, lengths. Um, let me get these out first. Now, don't want to disconnect my cords. I just want to pull those through the holes that they go to. So this will come. Should pop right off now. There we go. Okay. So, part that I need to replace is, is this little, here's a switch right here. When you turn the power on and off, it just turns this little knob right here that turns the power on and off, right? And so my knob broke on it. This switch is actually still good, but um, I needed a new knob, so it came with the pin that goes, drops down in here. Ball rolling around. Got to figure out what this little ball goes to. I think it. I think it has something to do with this. And so I'm just going to remove the one that's here, uh, so we can get to put the other one in there. But I need to be careful of it because it has. Uh, I think it has a washer. Here's the, the entire piece. There's the pin that goes in. It's got this little spring-loaded thing. And I think that ball, this little ball right here, goes right under the spring like that. That's exactly where it goes. So I have to be sure to put that back in. It helps it roll when you turn it um, inside the turntable. So I got to make sure to put this, this ball back in place here uh, when I put this pin back in. Now, uh... Let me get the new pen. I need to clean this out while I'm in here too. You need to put the cap on first and then come through down to the other, like bring it from the, really the top of the turntable and through this way, um, instead of just putting the pen in and, and then putting the cap on. Uh, the cap can only go on one way. Um, but I know that the piece that of the pen that goes into this white piece has to have this little ring on it because there's a little kind of a, it's kind of a washer, but it's, it's like a key that locks this into place so it doesn't slip around and that has to go into this end. So that means that this other end goes into the, uh, power, the switch here. And it goes on there one way. It would only go on there one way. That there, and then I should be able to put the screw here. Probably should look at this and see what I'm doing. Let me move this out of the way. Now, it's a matter of getting this off of here. Now, this is where I have to be careful. Um, the last one, when I uh, took this, this kind of locking key off here, I lost it because I had to get it off with a little screwdriver and create a little bit of um, torque, if you will, to kind of snap it off. And it plucked off into my uh, den carpet, and I haven't seen it since. And so I had to go out and buy um, another kind of washer and kind of fix it, like cut it and make it fit on the other one. And I really don't want to do that in this case. So I'm going to um, grab.
grab a small screwdriver to help me get this off and um, try not to lose it. Give me a second. Okay, got my screwdrivers and I got some paper towels so I can wipe this thing down a little bit. So the whole goal is to not pluck this little pin all the way across my studio where I can't find it tonight. Um, let's see if I can do it smartly. And remember, this pen has been on here for <laughs> 32 years, so it's not going to just pop off. Actually, oh, look at that. I think I, look at that. It came right off. I was just saying it wouldn't come off super easy, and it did, so I didn't lose it. It's teeny. Can you see that? No, I don't think I can get it in focus. It's so small. But yeah, so good. That's That's perfect. Let me put that over here with the... Little ball bearing, we drive over here out of the way. Okay, so here's the goal. The goal is to put this back on here correctly, and then also have this spring back in here and lock it back into place with that key spring and this ball bearing. This is going to be the challenging part. Now I'm going to try to get this ball under here. This is going to be a challenge. Hmm. I'm going to have to get creative with this. A little uh, surgery bag here. I don't know if this is going to work. But what I'm going to try to do is tape the uh, ball under there with a small piece of tape and then pull that piece of tape out after I get the piece back in place. I don't know that this is going to work, but I got to try something. It worked. It worked. I'm really proud of myself for thinking of that tape thing. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. So let's see if I can get this key back on here to lock it back into place. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay. I can be I don't have to I don't have to do anything else in here. I probably should power it on um, to make sure it works before I do that. I also need to clean it up in the inside so okay now that I have the power switch back on I plugged it up let's just make sure before I uh, put the bottom back on and screw put all the screws back in I want to make sure that the power switch works so uh turn this over yeah let's turn the power on beautiful off on Great, 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 great. So I am going to unplug it and put the bottom back on. Then I can just, all right. Okay, let's um let's put the new feet on it. So these are the uh, original feet that came on in. As you can see, they're coming apart. Um, so I ordered these feet off of uh, I think I either got them off of eBay or Amazon. They're not the uh, OEM feet, um, but you know they'll do the do the job. They're about the same size. All right. And pretty simple to put on. 
come with their own screws here. And they go into these four spots here. Okay, so now we got the feet on, got the power switch on. Turn her back over. Beautiful. So now I just need to fix this uh, tone arm clip uh, and then we'll start making it look good. Okay, to remove the uh, tone arm clip here, it has a Phillips screw underneath it and without taking the whole tone arm off, uh, what I can do is take um, like this little Phillips head bit and put it underneath here and get it in the screw and then lock it in the place here with these pair of pliers to hold it. And then, um, let's see, lefty should be loosely. And I turn this, it's a little tight, but it's been on there a while. Turn this with my hand and it comes right off, right? And then I just have to get this new one out Put it on there, place up. But I don't want that screw to fall out, so I'm gonna try to get this out with one hand. So I took it out beforehand. All right, so it just has screws right on back on it. Cool. So now all that's left to do is make it look good. I ordered a skin for it from uh, 12 inch skins uh, and I designed it myself. And so I'm going to put that skin onto the turntable now. And uh, before I do that, first thing I need to do is clean it up a little bit. I wiped it down really good and got it was really dirty in here because they had just been sitting in my basement. Um, so I've cleaned most of it up, but I'm going to take uh, some alcohol swabs because one of the first things I need to do is clean this platter off with um, alcohol. <laughs> about ready to put this skin on here okay so this is my custom skin that's going to go on and I see I have my noise reduction logo uh, got 1988 triple B that's my uh, production name name I produce under I should say um, and I just went with the solid black uh, which I like a lot and so there's a process to this uh, I put the platter back on here, but I'm gonna have to remove the platter to actually make this work. And I'm going to sit this here, this platter back out of the way. And I'm going to turn the turntable this way. Make it a little bit easier. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the skin on the turntable and uh, align it. Oh, I'm going to pop out this um, power. All right. First thing I gotta do is get this tone arm in there. Take this fader off of here. Once I do that, what I'm going to do is put three pieces of tape here to hold this side in place, right? So I have my masking tape here. 
Okay, now I'm going to uh, take my tone arm and rotate the arm over this way. Removed, I need to take this weight off. Gotta be careful with this because so, what I'm gonna do is pull this up and I'm going to peel away. <laughs> Okay, so it looks great, but I have the icing on the cake is uh, I have control vinyl that I ordered from 12 inch skins also to complete the look. This is the control vinyl. It completes the look. What do you think? I love it. I'm so excited. Um, I just can't wait to, I'm going to hook it all up and pull out the mixer, load up Serato, and um, see what's good. So I'll show you the whole setup. So here it is, my new DJ setup. I've got my um, Techniques from 1988, my SL1200 Mark IIs, um, and I got this Rain 70 mixer that I'm really excited about. Um, I'm also going to be using the phase controllers. I'll do another video um, unboxing those because I haven't opened those up yet to show you the phase uh, controllers that I'll be using with the turntable. So I won't even need these stylus because I won't be actually using the control vinyl. Um, I'll be using the phase uh, controllers for that. Man, I'm, I'm really excited about this. Thanks for watching and being a part of this journey and all you guys giving me feedback on... Uh, what your advice was for equipment to buy. I'm going to incorporate this into my music production, um, use it to, you know, continue to educate myself on the new music that's coming out and all the old music from the past and looking forward to digitizing some more of my vinyl um, and getting that into my Serato library. Um, I'm just really excited about this. As always, if you like the channel, give me a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you like the type of content that you're seeing here because more of this type of content is going to continue to come. And uh, turn on notifications. Hit the bell so you're notified when I release new content. I appreciate each and every one of you. I'm looking forward to your comments. Um, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Um.